So what exactly are dental implants? Dental implants are a different way of replacing lost teeth as they are fixed in your jawbone so they function more like a natural tooth. Implants can be used to replace a single tooth. They can replace several teeth to hold a fixed bridge or they can be used to secure removable partial and full dentures. They can replace teeth lost to disease or teeth that may have been knocked out due to trauma, for example, when playing sports. Dental implants are ideal for replacing lost teeth, but it is important to know about the alternatives. These may include fixed bridges or removable full and partial dentures. Infected teeth that still have a good support within the jawbone may be saved through endodontic therapy something that is better known as root canal therapy. Root-treated teeth can be fully restored with a post and crown. Ill-fitting dentures can be remade to provide a better fit, or it might be possible to reline them in order to keep the gums and jawbone healthy. Missing teeth should always be replaced, as otherwise the remaining teeth may move, causing the bite to collapse. Correcting this can be costly and difficult. Before deciding on dental implant treatment, your dentist will take a complete medical and dental evaluation and develop a plan. This is to ensure you do not have any health conditions that could make surgery inadvisable. In addition, the dentist will use a number of different diagnostic tools such as CT scans or dental x-rays so your implants can be placed with precision and with minimal risk. The process for having dental implants involves two separate surgical procedures. The initial surgery is to place the implant post in the jawbone and is usually carried under a local anesthetic. An incision is made in the gum tissue before a hole is precisely created. The implant is placed into the hole and the gum is stitched shut. The site is left to heal so the implant post can integrate firmly with the jawbone. During this process, new bone cells will grow on and around the implant post, ensuring it cannot move and that it is strong enough to support a restoration. To assist healing, Dental appliances should not be worn for the first few days after surgery, as it is important not to put pressure on the site. If you must use the appliance right away, it might be possible to adjust it so it does not touch the implant site, thus avoiding placing pressure on the implant. The second surgical procedure is shorter and takes place between three and eight months later, at which stage the implant will be exposed and evaluated. This is a process to determine if the implant post has successfully locked into the jawbone. At this point, it may be necessary to make some changes. If the implant has failed to lock in, then it may need to be removed. Options at this stage can include changing the implant or placing the implant at a different area. If the implant post has been successful, then the second surgical procedure is to create an opening in the gum to expose the implant and placing a post known as a healing cap. This is so a tooth can be attached that will extend above the gum line into the mouth. The cap is used to shape the gum tissue to give support to the crown or bridge. The final phase is to thread a metal sleeve known as an abutment into the implant, and this will be used to hold the crown, bridge, or denture firmly in position. 